We are officially on to Cincinnati. We're on to Cincinnati. We're on to Cincinnati. No, that joke will never get old. Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Shifty's 49ers Talk. This one goes out to Niner fans who were near, who are far, NFL fans, sports fans, you are all welcome here. Today, tonight, we are talking about the Week 14 game between the San Francisco 49ers and the Cincinnati Bengals. Kitty goes meow. Very interesting game and a very big game for both of these teams. Both of these teams are coming off big losses the previous week and they're both looking to rebound. Bengals are right in the thick of it for the AFC North and then the Niners are right in the thick of it for the wild card spot. So both teams are going to be hungry for a win. Now, let's look and see what are some of the things that the Niners will really need to do in order to maybe come away with the win in Cincinnati. So, Jimmy Garoppolo, he is key player number one. Are we going to get good Jimmy or are we going to get bad Jimmy? Bad Jimmy was last week. Good Jimmy was the three or four games before that. Last week, just some awful, dreadful passes um, that resulted in interceptions. We cannot afford to have that, especially because, in my opinion, this is going to be a game that could very well turn into a shootout. I predict both teams getting to 30 points at least. It's going to be a fun one, that's for sure, but we need to have Jimmy. Can't turn the ball over. Got to be careful with the ball. We got to make sure we get the ball into our playmakers' hands. I love what we did in the first half against Seattle with getting the ball to George Kittle. Got to do a whole lot more of that. And I'd really like to see Brandon Ayuk have a big, big game. You know, with Debo Samuel is most likely not going to be playing. So Brandon Ayuk has to come out, has to have a big game. I'd also like to see Trent Sherfield make up for some awful blocks drops he was dreadful last week so he's got to make up for that if Jimmy can hit him and he can make some plays I think that will go a long way to uh, leading to a 49ers win when you look at this matchup you know of course and I think that goes for any team that hey the quarterback has to play well but when you look at the matchup it's a really interesting one because the teams statistically are actually really really close Um, the Bengals are leading somewhat in like arguably the most important categories but when you look at it it's going to be strength versus strength it's going to be so the Niners run the ball better than Cincinnati on offense but the Cincinnati defense is much better at stopping the run than the Niners defense now Cincinnati passes the ball better than San Francisco but the Niners defense passing defense is a lot better than Cincinnati's now the key categories though where Cincinnati does beat the 49ers statistically so far in the season are in points both scoring points offensively and not giving up as many points defensively and finally turnovers. So those are three big categories where Cincinnati are definitely beating the 49ers. If you look at the last maybe month as a whole, um, they've been trending in a much better direction. Like the Niners were basically tied for almost last in turnovers. They've now moved up a whole bunch of spots. They've been causing a whole bunch of turnovers the last few weeks. And if we want to go into Cincinnati and get the win, we got to keep that up. Got to keep that up 100%. Now, a big thing that really hurt us last week and also the week before against Minnesota is the Niners special teams have to come out and they have to play well. The Niners special teams last week directly led to a touchdown. The week before against Minnesota, they had a kick, Minnesota had a kick return for a touchdown. You cannot consistently give up points like that on special teams. It's going to screw you over. So Richard Hightower, the Niners special teams coach, did come out. He basically put all the blame on himself, and that's fine. That's all well and good. But at the end of the day, now these guys have to step it up and make some plays. Um, 
I just hopefully we can kick the ball on kickoffs out the back of the end zone because I'm sick of seeing teams return it for a whole bunch of yards. So hopefully we adjust and do that. Um, we cannot have any turnovers on special teams. No more fumbles, none of that. If we want to win this game, we got to play sound, fundamental football. Overall, you know, on defense, there's going to be a huge boost for the 49ers. Fred Warner is going to be back in the lineup. So having Warner and Aziz right there manning the middle of the field is going to be big time. It's going to be big time, especially because we're going to be lacking maybe our most important defensive back in Emmanuel Mosley, especially now because, hey, look, we're going up against a Bengals offense that has weapons galore. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. These are all very, very effective uh, wide receivers. And Joe Burrow is more than capable of getting the ball to those guys. Fred Warner is going to have to step up, and I'd like to see him make a turnover, cause a turnover, have some big plays in the backfield. However, we just really have to put Cincinnati into unfavorable positions. Like, we have to be stout on first down. And he runs, we have to clog those runs. We have to cause Cincinnati to be in those third and longs where guys like Nick Bosa, Arden Key, Eric Armstead, DJ Jones, they can get into the backfield and maybe force some mistakes. I do think, and kind of like I said towards the opening, I do think that both teams are going to put up some points and I think it's going to be real close at the end of the game. But it's the team who who limits mistakes or who can force other team to make mistakes is going to come out with the win here and uh, it's really going to come down to just those situational matchups now the Niners typically on third down and offense have been quite well but we got to force Cincinnati because Burrow's still a young guy still a young guy you know Jamar Chase is still a rookie um, but if we can force some of the you know force them into bad situations maybe make a couple of bad plays kind of force them what uh, the Chargers did last week to uh, Cincinnati, where they just had a whole bunch of turnovers and it was a mess. So another big guy that we have to worry about is going to be Josh Norman. Josh Norman, I've been talking about this guy all season long. With Emmanuel Mosley being out and with Cincinnati having those big three receivers, he has to have the game of his life. He has to come out and play really, really well. I really do like K1 in the slot, so I'm not really worried about that. However, Josh Norman, and then we're going to have maybe a rookie in Diamador Lenore, um, Dante Johnson out there, and so our cornerbacks are going to have they're going to have a lot to uh, they have to step up big time, and I do predict. Uh, a lot of coverage for Jimmy Ward, for Jaquaski Tart. You know, there's going to be, a, they're going to have to be on it. You know, the Niners secondary is going to have to be in sync. They're going to have to be firing on all cylinders if we don't want to see Joe Burrow put up like three, you know, 350 yards. So when it comes down to it, yes, I do think it's going to be a shootout. Of course, kind of going back to the key players, you know, offensively, I do think Kittle will get his yards. Maybe I think he'll end with like, between 80 and 100 maybe a touchdown but as much as I want to see Trent Sherfield have a big game Brandon Ayuk this needs to be basically like a coming out party I really want to see Brandon Ayuk have like eight or nine catches 150 yards you know the Bengals defense is not that great they do have a couple of decent edge rushers and Trey Hendrickson and it's uh, Sam Hubbard I believe um but I think Trent Williams will do a great job of shutting down at least one of them, you know, and hopefully Shanahan can scheme things open. Now, um, one of the things that I actually read on Twitter, which is uh, from Football Outsiders, his name is Aaron Schatz, who they do like deep dive into some serious like statistical analysis. And the Bengals are very weak over the middle of the field. And honestly, that's where Jimmy G does a lot of his damage. So that's good news for us. I think Kittle's going to be able to get open. I'm not a huge fan of the Bengals linebackers. Honestly, can't really name a couple of them off the top of my head. So I think that's where Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be hitting George Kittle. Hopefully Ayuk has a couple of big plays for slants. Maybe we see someone out of nowhere step up. Maybe this could be Jawan Jennings having a coming out party. But someone else outside of Kittle is going to have to step up in receiving. One thing which is really weird, um, being a Niner fan, is what I haven't even talked about, is the run game. Looks like Elijah Mitchell is going to be out for the game, so it's going to be mostly Jeff Wilson Jr. and Jamichael Hasty getting the majority of the handoffs. <sighs> we're, going to have our, so we're going to have a tough battle here because, yeah, Cincinnati is very good against the run, and you know they're going to follow that Seattle method of like just basically 
eight guys in the box, Jimmy Garoppolo beat us. Until we can prove that we can come overcome that, that's what we're going to see. So can we get those runs? We still need to be able to run the ball. We still have to make them respect the run game, get those maybe three, four yards on first down. Instead of that, maybe you know, just getting back to the line of scrimmage or one yard. We got to set ourselves up in good positions as much as we got to put them in bad positions offensively. I think, you know, both of these quarterbacks are prone to making some, you know, some some plays that are could, you know, you could throw the game away on some bad interceptions, but they can also make some big time plays to win it. So situational football is going to be the key here. Um, special teams. Yeah. Richard Hightower, get those guys playing well. Um, let's give a shout out to D'Amico, who's been awesome these last few weeks coaching that defense. And of course, we get our vocal guy, um, Fred Warner back. So overall, I think it's going to be a pretty darn close game. You know, I'm trying to sound positive here, but at the end of the day, if I had to say, I do believe that we lose this game, unfortunately. My prediction for this game is going to be Cincinnati 34, San Francisco 30. We move to 6-7 and seven on the season, but the good news is with five games, five games left, or sorry, four games left after this, one is against the Falcons, one is against the Texans, one is against the Rams, and we own them. And the other game is against Tennessee, and who knows what Tennessee team will show up on that day. So, overall, just got to, you know, we got to do exactly what we did against Minnesota and don't do whatever we did against Seattle. You know, get those long drives going. Get those, you know, keep our defense off the field. Keep Joe Burrow and that explosive off offense off the field. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. So, do have some news and some not so great news is unfortunately this game this Sunday I will not be able to stream it just due to work commitments um, if you guys know or don't know I work retail so um, it's just a crazy time and there's no way I can get the day off work this Sunday even though I tried but the good news is I for sure will be able to stream the next three games after that. So really excited for that. Um, but unfortunately, this Sunday I won't be streaming the game, but I'll be following it as closely as I can. And of course, I'll have videos out talking about it. Um, but yeah, leave, uh, leave some comments, guys, what your predictions are for the games, what you think the 49ers will have to do to come out with the win. Um, like, subscribe, do all the good stuff. And um, I guess uh, at this point, guys, all I can say is that... Uh, Gonna catch you on the flip side.